The first Chinese leg breaker stepped forward and threw a powerful roundhouse kick straight into Gorilla's stomach. And from that moment on, all the talking was done, and combat had become the speech of the night. Such was the force of the kick, Gorilla doubled over as it impacted on his torso, and no sooner had he crouched down than the other Chinese leaned in and with a ferocious yell hit him hard on the side of the face. Gorilla experienced a flash of pain, and then warm blood flowed from a cut above his eyebrow. His head was whirling, down was up and vice versa. Then he felt his body being thrusted upwards and propped against the wall. Then came multiple blows to his stomach, snapping, punishing punches, not in a flurry, but in a controlled manner. He was fighting for breath and thought he would pass out at any minute. He turned his eye toward the Chinese man who'd kicked him initially and saw that he was slipping a heavy wooden knuckle duster onto his hand. Gorilla guessed that the two Chinese must belong to one of the many Gung Fu street schools. They were certainly well trained and knew how to inflict pain professionally. What he knew for certain was that if that knuckle duster came into play and got to work on him, he would be pissing blood for months and might never walk again. The heavyset Chinese moved forward, rubbing the knuckle duster menacingly with his off hand while his partner held Gorilla in place against the wall. Knuckles craned his head forward and began to yell directly into Gorilla's face, almost as if he was psyching himself up for what was inevitably, at least in his mind, the end of the performance. Bad mistake, sunshine, thought Gorilla. He might not have been a trained martial artist, but Gorilla Grant had earned his spurs in many a good street fight. It might not look pretty, but bloody hell was it effective. Just a few more inches, Knuckles, he thought, as he slowed his breathing for what was about to come. A few more inches and... Bang! Gorilla thrust his head forward with full power and smashed it directly into the nose of Knuckles who proceeded to fly backwards into the darkened corridor, blood covering his face. Like all good street fighters who'd been brought up the hard way, Gorilla knew that as soon as you deal with idiot number one, you have to deal with idiot number two. He turned into the other man, ducking his body down and delivering a devastating uppercut into the man's balls, heard his cry of pain, and then grabbed his ears, wrenching his head downwards before he brought his knee up to the man's face. He watched as the guy crumpled onto the floor. Not stopping his momentum, Gorilla went to work on the pair with a good old-fashioned football party. Kicks to the heads, thighs, and hands. His shoes took the brunt of the blows well. They weren't designed for the type of punishment Gorilla was dishing out to Knuckles and his friend, but that didn't stop him from putting force behind the kicks. The men were down, but not out. Gorilla turned and searched for an escape route. The street would be no good, there might be more waiting outside, so the best choice was up to the roof, and then across the buildings until he could get to safety and gather his thoughts. He ran for the stairwell and pounded up the steps that would take him to the roof. Behind him, he could hear the pounding footsteps of the Chinese strong arms, and he knew there was only one more floor before he'd make it. He didn't look back, instead concentrating on powering his legs to take him forwards and upwards. He dismissed the sounds of running feet behind him, hoping that the access door to the top wasn't sealed or he'd be at a dead end. He bypassed the fifth and final floor doorway and kept running. From the corner of his eye, he could make out the dark-suited figures of the two Chinese thugs on the level below him, 